Ooh, just lifting this TBR pile is a workout. Hello, today I want to talk about my most ambitious to be read list of the year because I've picked out six really big books that I want to read in 2023. And to give myself inspiration and motivation, I'm wearing my Reading Rainbow t-shirt that uh, my sister very kindly gave me for Christmas. Uh, did anyone else used to watch Reading Rainbow when they were younger? I used to love that show and I don't remember all that much about the content of it, but I am guessing that they didn't set any children to read any 500 plus page books like this. But that's what I'm doing for myself because I always find it quite intimidating to start really long books like this uh, because I know that they're going to be in endurance test, uh, that they will probably be quite challenging, but they also have the potential to be wonderfully inspiring and involving books that uh, hopefully if it's a really great book, I won't actually want it to end. So I'll be glad that there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages <laughs> to get along with. Uh, so yeah, I've set myself um, this, this reading list. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books or if you are setting yourself any challenges of really big books that you want to read this year, um, please let me know about that in the comments below. Now, what do I define as a big book? Uh, it, it is really any book that's uh, around 500 pages or, or more. I'd say that that's quite a, a long book and something that will inevitably take me a, a really long time. Now, I have found personally the best way for me to handle reading really big books like this, because I know people have a number of different strategies of approaching books like this, but for me, I've found that just focusing on this one book and reading it all the way through to the end uh, is the best way to do that. That might sound like a very obvious statement, but I know a lot of people like to read really big books by breaking them up and reading other shorter books in between. But I found when I've done that in the past, then I get distracted and I'm like, like, oh, I'm just gonna read this other shorter book and then I'll get back to the really long book. And it just makes it feel like uh, reading this book takes ages and ages and ages, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if, if it is something you want to enjoy over a leisurely, amount of time. But one of the difficulties of that is if you spend too much time reading a book, by the time you get to the end, the beginning of it feels a bit foggy or, or unfamiliar, and uh, or at least it, it does for me. And so so then I have to go back to the beginning again and start it all over again. And, and this whole cycle starts up. So yeah, for me personally, I, I'm when I read any of these books, I'm just going to try to concentrate on reading them all the way through in one go. Um, so hopefully over the course of uh, two or three or more weeks or however long it takes me. First up is a relatively recently uh, published and translated novel uh, that is over 600 pages long. It's Solenoid by Mersha Cartorescu, uh, translated by Sean Cotter. Uh, Cartorescu is a Romanian writer and it's difficult to know what this book is actually about, even from reading the, the, dis dis the description of it. Uh, it begins as an account of Cartorescu's um, time teaching in a high school and then moves into an account of uh, history and philosophy and mathematics and time. The nature of life itself. There's the backdrop of 1970s and 1980s communist Romania. The story moves all around and all over the, the place from a tuberculosis sanatorium to an encounter with an anti-death protest movement, a society of dream investigators, and an extended visit to the minuscule world of dust mites. So it sounds quite wild. And how do you summarize all of that? I mean, I've read a number of things about this book and watched some videos about it, and I still don't really understand what I'm getting into, but I'm so excited to, to read it for its like meditation on uh, the nature of life and time and how he uses a unique blend of autobiography, um, fiction and history. So bring it on. I'm so interested in what insights 
insights this might give about art and life. Next up is another brand new novel at almost 600 pages long, Brett Easton Ellis's book The Shards, his first novel in 13 years. And uh, yeah, quite long. He says that he has been wanting to write this novel um, for his whole life, basically, that he first had the inspiration and idea for it way back in 1981 when he was in high school. And the story is a kind of work of auto fiction in that it follows a character named Brett, very much like the author himself. Um, and when he was in Los Angeles and going to high school and about his circle of friends and a new person that moves to their area and becomes part of their circle of friends and his kind of obsession with this new boy, but also his semi-obsession with a serial killer that is lurking around uh, in the area and is in the news and then comes increasingly uh, very frighteningly closer to um, his circle of, of friends and the, the collision between um, these two different worlds. And so, yes, I just uh, read his uh, debut novel, Less Than Zero, uh, recently and um, as kind of like background for this book because I'd read um, a couple of his other books but had never got to that that first book. And now I'm, I'm glad I did because it, it is, I think, a kind of... Fictional, fictionalization or, or sort of fantasy version of um, his young life. And, um, and so this, like, I guess gives another dynamic of um, and look at that, that kind of lifestyle, but also this impending sense of, of doom and death, um, which is definitely all throughout less than zero. Um, but in this is given the physical form of a, of a serial killer that's stalking them. Um, so I think it, it's meant to be quite like a thrilling um, story as well as like a really fascinating look at his life and uh, yeah and I've just read such good things uh, about this that I'm so curious to see what I make of it. Next is a relatively uh, recent book, uh, which is the, the biggest book on my list, uh, Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez, uh, translated by Megan McDowell. And this novel uh, begins with the, the death of the uh, wife and mother of uh, a man and his son, and uh, how in the, the aftermath, after um, she's died, they go to investigate um, or look into her origins and find out that she belonged to this special order slash cult um, that was interested in trying to pursue eternal life and uh, had a number of rituals and sacrifices surrounding that and how um, this order tries to draw the boy into their practices and following the the drama of that but also um, against the backdrop of um, this fictionalized version of Argentina um, during the the decades of uh, dictatorship in the the country um, so I think it's meant to be quite um, a dark and sinister book I have read a number of Enriquez's um, books and um, fiction before um, she has this really interesting and twisted way of, of looking at the the world and society which does give interesting insights sometimes I think it tips over a bit too far into almost shock value more than trying to say anything substantial but I have heard really great things about this book which is meant to be her epic and uh, I just love the creepy cover of this next I have a biography which was first published in 1993 it's uh, of Jean John Genet by Edmund White. Uh, this is Edmund White's like really big, like sustained work that he spent years and years researching and writing while living in France and exploring um, this elusive author's life um, because Jean Genet was a bastard son. He was a thief. He was a prostitute. He was a, a jailbird. So very much an outsider and very interested in outsiders, which he wrote about 
in a very poetic and powerful way. And I read a number of Jean Genet's books when I was a teenager, and I found them so inspiring as well as uh, bewitching and and very curious. And uh, I, I'm I'm not sure what I would make of his fiction now, but I've been wanting to reread it, and I thought it would be interesting to get this background knowledge of Jean Genet's life before diving back into his his novels. And I mean, for me, he was just this kind of inspiring outsider figure that was involved in all of these uh, sort of fringe uh, political causes that he got really involved with. Um, he moved around a lot, was a really restless um, person, um, but had the had, so had this really interesting outsider's perspective on society and, and the world and how life should be lived and um, and and for you know I think any like teenager who like latches on to this rebellious figure like this and just finds them so fascinating um, like I did and and so yeah I, I want to now read much more about his life and get more insights into it and following the formation of, of this queer outsider. Next is a book first published in 1961 and is considered an American classic. I'm kind of doubling up on this on my TBR pile because it, it was also on my list of classics that I want to read this year of Catch-22 by Joseph Heller, a story set during World War II that uh, revolves between the perspectives of a number of uh, different characters involved in conflict, but mainly focusing on an uh, Air Force pilot and uh, who is a kind of anti-hero figure because uh, this is a novel that highlights the the absurdities of war and military life and uh, I'm kind of ashamed I've I've never read it before and I don't think this is a book that's a, sort of much in vogue anymore and um, and I've heard it's a bit of a difficult reading experience um, but I've, I've always wanted to get to it and uh, yeah it just sounds like such a fascinating um, book and perspective on all of these issues. The novel was also adapted into a film directed by Mike Nichols, uh, which I'd be interested to see, but of course want to read the book first. And finally, in my big books challenge, I have a book of short stories by the great uh, South African writer Nadine Gordimer, a Nobel Prize winner, and uh, this is her collection called Lifetimes of short stories that she wrote and published between the years 1952 and 2000. 2007, so a really long span of time. And uh, Gordimer was also part of my, my classics TBR um, for the year. I want to read her novel, A Guest of Honor, but I'd also like to read some of her short stories. And in the video I made about classics I want to read this year, I gave a little anecdote about um, going to see Gordimer at a, a reading or just missing her at a reading and then asking her very hurriedly um, to sign my book before she went. But I remembered when I looked in this book that I I also went to an event of hers later at the South Bank Center um, when this, I think when this um, book first came out and uh, yeah, in 2000 or 2012 or like shortly after it came out. And uh, so yeah, I did get to hear her speak and interviewed and questioned, um, which was really wonderful. And, uh, but uh, also got to have um, this book signed. Um, so Gordimer wrote about uh, race and sexuality and politics in such an interesting way and I think reading this book I'm trying to read it from start to finish will give such an interesting overview of her life and the evolution of her as a writer both in her writing style because I think some of these stories are more realistic in their representation some of them are more experimental some of them uh, take up issues that she was really interested in at the time and so shows this evolving sensibility through the medium of fiction in a whole range of characters and stories and situations that she created to represent all of these things. And um, so, yeah, I, I think it's it'll just be like wonderful to to see um, her life as a writer through these different short stories. And I always like to temper um, some big reading with them um, with some short stories. And I probably won't read this book from start to finish without reading anything else. I'll, I'll probably 
intersperse these stories with some other books because I feel like you can do that with short stories um, but that over time it'll give me this broader overview of her life and um, her work as um, such uh, one of the, the greatest writers that we ever had. So here we have them uh, do my muscle pumping for the day <laughs> lift them up and down and um, these are all the books big books that I want to read over the, the course of this year and hopefully I'll get to all of them because yeah I'm really keen to read them but like I said I'd love to know um, if you've read any of these books and if you have any thoughts about them um, any suggestions of where I should start in reading them uh, or if you have any big books that you're hoping to get to yourself um, please let me know about that in the, the comments below and why you're so keen to read these big books and if you have any particular strategy for you know tackling really long extended books like this because yeah it can be quite intimidating but um, some of the best books I've ever read have been these really long books that I felt like have been able to completely envelop me in their their world and um, that I didn't want to end and so luckily had hundreds and hundreds of pages to, to read about but uh, I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.